Yo, what is up guys? This is Troy D from the Troy D 24 seven mall channel, your source for on point and no hype reviews. We are back yet again, everybody. We are back with another fragrance review today. And this one right here, this fragrance is pretty popular within Fragcom. And finally, right here, we get to do a full video. I'll give you guys a full breakdown, no hype style of this video, because finally I had enough time to really review it and test it and get my impression of it right here. Now, before I continue, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys, okay? Liking and subscribing and watching the ads is a great big deal to this channel. It does help me procure a lot of these samples of these fragrances that you guys are looking out for really, really quickly in lightning speed. So if you haven't done so, it's just a couple of clicks. And if you've already done so, thank you so much for your support. And the fragrance that we will be talking about today is none other than Amouage Opus 13 Silver Oud. Yes, Silver Oud. Finally, I get to do this review. Now, this fragrance, Silver Oud, comes from the house of Amouage. And Amouage is literally one of my favorite fragrance houses out there. Number one, because they do make a lot of full bottle worthy fragrances, guys. And number two, I like them because there's always, always that Amouage stamp. It's kind of like an exotic imprint that Amouage puts in literally all of their fragrances. It's a different shader. It makes every scent special and different, but also wearable at the same time and full bottle worthy at the same time. So I do have a lot of Amouage reviews in my channel. Type Amouage on the search link and you'll be able to access all my Amouage reviews, including the recent Royal Tobacco, which is Opus 14, as opposed to this one, Opus 13. Now this fragrance right here, Silver Oud, I just wanna set the record straight. This fragrance came out back in 2021, guys, and it's been re-bottled into, thank God, this standard Amouage bottle to join the Opus Library collection because they kind of released this Opus collection now with these beautifully colored bottles. It's kind of like very minimalist. You've got gray, white, dark brown, very monochrome as well. And I like these bottles right here. And finally, this Silver Oud is put in this bottle and not in the Jeremy looking date for men, <laughs> office for men bottle that I didn't think it deserved. Finally, we get an Amwatch bottle right here. Now, speaking of the word opus, the word opus basically means work of art. It is a work of art. You've heard this word in magnum opus when it comes to music. And these fragrances like Silver Oud, part of the Opus Library Collection, these are deemed as works of art by Amouage. And I really like that. I like that they're putting out this line that they're saying, hey, this is a very artsy, an artistic expression right here. But the thing about this fragrance though, is that this fragrance Silver Oud is very popular in Fragcom. So before even trying this, I had a feeling that this fragrance was gonna be really, really wearable or else it wouldn't be that popular with Fragcom. And when it comes to Fragcom guys and the Fragcom feedback, there's a few questions that I will answer as I review this fragrance. Number one, is this fragrance a smoke bomb? A lot of people are calling this fragrance a smoke bomb. It's a lot of smoke with that birch. I'm going to definitely address that in this review right here. And number two, I will address the Fragcom feedback that this fragrance is absolutely wearable. That's right. I mean, my instincts were correct. A lot of people in Fragcom love this fragrance because they say it's absolutely wearable. So that's one of the few questions I'm going to answer today. I will unpack a lot of things as I review this fragrance. But before I do that, let's go spray this thing right now. Mmm. Okay, guys, let's talk about the opening part of Amouage Silver Oud, shall we? Right here in the opening notes, you are going to get Cipriol oil, patchouli, as well as Virginia cedar right here. And this opening, my God, it is, it is so good, okay? You can see that in my expression. I had just sprayed this fragrance, and man, what a wonderful opening right here. On the opening, you're gonna get Cipriol oil and patchouli together, guys. And this combo is quite amazing right here. Now, Cipriol oil, I've said this before, this Cipriol oil, in my opinion, is a great replacement for oud, okay? Because it is an exotic smell, okay? It's got that earthiness. It has like the earthy, it has the sweetness, it has woodiness, but 
minus any of that animalic stuff right there. So you're gonna get a great amount of Cypriol oil right here. And then it's matched with that patchouli as well, which is also earthy, but patchouli does have its own smell right there. It's kind of like a sweet earthy patchouli that mixes really, really well with this Cypriol oil right here. And again, this one right here, this is why a lot of people are saying it's a wearable oud. Actually, they're not smelling oud in the beginning. It's actually Cypriol oil. And it's a great amount of Cypriol oil. Again, it will make you feel like you're smelling something exotic, but then it's also aromatic. It's sweet, it's earthy. It is definitely gonna put you in that ethereal Nirvana mood as you spray this perfume. Now, what's great about the Cypriol oil that I'm gonna take note of is that it's not an overdose of Cypriol oil. And I have smelled that in other Middle Eastern scents where it's a huge amount of Cypriol oil. It's basically a punch in the face. And I've said this before, you shouldn't put a lot of Cypriol oil, not too much to where it kind of gets too earthy and scratchy, you know? I guess that's the way I can describe an overdose of Cypriol oil. But right here, you have a really, really balanced amount of that. And the patchouli, in my opinion, kind of mellows it out as well. And then you also have your dry Virginia cedar to add that woodiness into the mix. It is definitely a wonderful, wonderful opening. It's aromatic, earthy, comforting, and more importantly, guys, it's very, very masculine, okay? This opening right here, it really tells you, man, this is a man's perfume right here. And I think about the Middle East, when I think about the United Arab Emirates, I mean, I've been there quite a few times. I mean, this is something I would wear on the daily if I was an Emirati, if I was, you know, a resident over there, I would really wear this on the daily as a guy. This opening right here definitely has a lot of impact, but it also has a beautiful impact for the wearer. Not only is it aromatic and earthy, but the one thing that I've seen on this fragrance on every single stage that they've done is that there's always an element of sweetness, guys, okay? And that is a beautiful part of this fragrance. And right here in the opening, you are still gonna get some sweetness from that patchouli, a little bit of sweetness from that Cypriol oil as you are smelling these very masculine like notes, these tones of masculinity right here in the opening. Now, like I've said, some people will think that they're smelling oud in the beginning, but they're actually smelling Cypriol oil. Now, the big question right here in the mid is where is the oud, okay? I always ask that right there. Now, the thing about the oud right here in Silver Oud is that it's very, very tricky, guys. I think that the appearance of oud or the sensation of oud right here is going to be very, very subjective. And why do I I say that I say that because the notes in the beginning and the end of this fragrance right here are basically amplifiers of oud right here. So right in the beginning, for example, you're gonna get Cypriol oil that has some earthiness, some woodiness, some sweetness as well. And then way back in the end, you're gonna get your birch, you're gonna get your guyac wood and some amber. There's also that castorium that gives some animalic touch. And so right there, because these notes are sandwiching the oud, really, I mean, for your own senses, it could come out at any time that you feel that you are smelling oud. Now for me personally, this oud shows up in the one hour mark. Yes, one hour into this fragrance is where the oud really shows up on its own. And that's pretty much where the patchouli and the Cypriol oil weakens, backs up a bit, and then finally you get the oud. And the oud right here is a dark oud wood with semi-animalic nuances right here, okay? Again, it's a dark oud wood with semi-animalic nuances. And that's precisely what I mean by the other notes are basically amplifying the smell of this oud. So it's really hard to tell which part is the actual oud. You can say that you experienced it in the beginning. You can say that you experienced it in the end. Or you can say that you experienced it throughout the life of this fragrance. Now right here in the mid as well, you are going to get the notes of Madagascar vanilla as well as the early appearance of birch right here. Now Madagascar vanilla, this is one of my favorite notes right here. It's basically the highest quality vanilla right here. And it acts as a balancer 
because the birch comes early. So you are going to smell that smokiness from that birch to mix with that oud and kind of engulf it actually at some point. But then because there is Madagascar vanilla, the sweetness definitely balances it out. And it's the balance of sweet and smoky, maybe you can say an incense type of effect that engulfs the oud, the semi-animalic dark oud wood. So ultimately, like I said, it's got that smoke, it's got that sweetness, and a semi-animalic nuance right here. Now here's something that I will address. Some people that have tried this fragrance have said that this fragrance is basically a smoke bomb, okay? And if you look at the notes, yeah, you've got some birch, you've got some gayak wood, but in my opinion, guys, it's quite different when you actually do a full wear of the fragrance as opposed to just spraying this sample on the wrist or on a test strip and smelling it up close because if you do that, yes, you will get that birch punch you in the face right there. But guys, if you do a full wear, it is actually quite balanced, guys. Again, that Madagascar vanilla does balance it out with the smoke, with the birch right here. Now headed to the dry down, guys, you are going to experience the note of castorium, okay? Castorium is a bridge note into the dry down right here. And as you guys know, castorium has an animalic nuance, but at the same time, it is a warming, comforting type of note right here. And it goes right after that sweet smoky oud mid guys okay it blends in perfectly again because the oud is semi-animalic it does make sense for the castorium to be there guys and it matches the smoke and sweetness pretty damn well guys okay so castorium is only a bridge note although it is on the base notes guys it's not going to be part of the dry down entirely it just bridges into the end right here. Now, when you look at the common feedback of Amwaj Silver Oud, you'll notice that a lot of people are really focused on the smokiness of this fragrance right here. But the one thing that they really don't talk about that I think is very, very consistent in every single stage of this fragrance is your sweetness, okay? There is a sweetness that's inserted by Amwaj on every single stage of this fragrance right here. From the Cypriol oil aroma with that patchouli, there's a sweetness right there, to the Madagascar vanilla, and then right here in the end, the core of the dry down is going to be your amber rome. And what is amber rome? Amber rome right here is an amber green note that sort of smells like a dry labdanum note, to be honest. And when I looked it up, it's basically amber, it's dry, it's got leathery facets, which I do smell right here in the dry down. And they said that Amberome also has coffee-like smells or tobacco-like smells as well. These little nuances that come with the Amberome right here. And I definitely believe it right here in the dry down the amberome, basically your dry labdanum type smell. It's got leather facets, but it's sweet, ambery, resinous, and again, it balances out all that smokiness. Now also here in the dry down, the smokiness continues with gayak wood. It goes from that birch to the gayak wood right here, but again, it is not an overdose of smokiness. I'd say it's really amber smoky right here. And again, the castorium isn't really part of the dry down. It's a bridge to the dry down from that semi-animalic oud. So it is smoky and ambery right here. It's a beautiful dry down right here. It's basically like a fade to black, but again, very, very masculine on every single stage of this fragrance. Now going back to my review of Diptyque Opsis, I did say that in my opinion, I do have these two identifiers of how a fragrance is a hit. Number one is wearability and how the user is excited to wear the fragrance. Now this fragrance right here is very masculine and really I think that if you are into Middle Eastern scents or if you live in places where this is the norm, I think as a guy, you would get excited wearing this. This one right here is a rotational fragrance, a rotational oud fragrance that I think a lot of men really enjoy and that's why this one right here is pretty popular. But at the same time, this fragrance does have that Amwaj stamp of exoticness. It does have that imprint that really puts you on that high emotional state 
as you are wearing this fragrance from the cipriol oil to that smoky sweet oud all the way to the ambery dry down i think that it really will put you in the mood so that is why this fragrance is a hit right here if you like manly oud scents that are balanced with some sweetness you're gonna like this fragrance right here maybe you'll even put this on your daily rotation if you live in the middle east i mean i can definitely imagine people wearing this on the daily. And then at the same time, you're gonna be put in that ethereal mood. That aroma of that Cipriol patchouli combination is gonna get you hard in the beginning, guys. Now, performance-wise, it's basically what you expect out of Amouage, guys. This one here is consistent on the sillage. It's gonna remain strong for over 12 hours without a doubt. And I think that it's just the right amount. I think that this is not your punch-in-the-face type of perfume. There are Cipriol Oud fragrances that are really a punch in the face and I know that there's a market for that that like that extreme uber masculine uh, type of smell right there from those oud fragrances but this one right here no this one right here is super duper wearable super duper balanced and it is a great intro to oud scents for those that really are looking for something maybe safe this is it right there and of course like I said real masculine ultimately I think you should try this guys and I believe there is actually a sample set where this is included so definitely try it but I would say that if this is your cup of tea guys that this is a full bottle worthy fragrance no doubt I think that this is ultimately super wearable in the Middle East and beyond and so yeah I really like Silver Oud I see why now a lot of people hail this as a really really great perfume I think it's full bottle worthy and for the price guys again this is a work of art okay you gotta understand that it does have high quality ingredients as well as the blend itself because guys Guys, let me tell you, just a preview on some other Middle Eastern scents I've tried. I've tried the cheapies, guys, okay? I've tried these Middle Eastern cheapies, and the thing about them is that there's no separation. You're really not feeling any stages of these cheap Middle Eastern perfumes. This one right here, yes, it is quite pricey, but then again, you are going to get every single stage with the notes really at a high level right there. All right, so that is it. That is my review of Amouage Opus 13 Silver Oud. This is a pretty nice perfume right here, and I can't wait to try the rest of the library collection. So far, I did try and test Royal Tobacco, and you can access that review at the end of this video. That one, in my opinion, is a lot more artistic. That is for sure. And they knew that because it's a tobacco scent, you know. But this one right here, Silver Oud, more wearable, I think. And, you know, it's artsy, but not to the degree of Royal Tobacco. Again, both of these scents full bottle worthy right there. And I can't wait to try the rest, like I said. And again, please do not forget to like and subscribe, guys. Again, welcome to my channel. If this is the first time that you've you know, chanced upon this channel. Welcome to my channel. Please do not forget to do that. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Have a great Labor Day. God bless. Take care. Peace.